Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm sitting down with Kate Ginsberg, who is the founder and CEO of Queen of To Do. So excited to be jumping in, having some conversation, talking about this crazy thing called entrepreneurship and the journey that uh, comes along with it. So Kate, thank you first off for taking some time with me this afternoon, uh, being willing to jump into this conversation. Why don't we just start with a little bit of background? Give us kind of the 10,000 foot view of who you are and your background and tell us a little bit about Queen of To Do. Absolutely. So I am Kate. I am the founder and CEO over at Queen of To Do. We're an in-home personal assistant and home management company, which means we take care of all of our clients' tasks, chores, errands, all of those things that eat up your evenings, your weekends, and and your mental bandwidth. Um, It's no easy job running a household, and people are doing it alone. Um, And we firmly believe that by providing those folks with support, uh, they are able to lead more balanced, more fulfilling, more aligned lives. Um, and pour into the things that really matter, things that they can't outsource, things like their job, their family, their friends, um, all of the things that make life really wonderful uh, that get pushed to the wayside by having to actually like make sure your house is in reasonably decent order and your kids have clean clothes to wear. Um, So we show up and we're kind of the fairy godmothers of the uh, the Austin area where it doesn't really matter what it is. We're happy to take it on. Um, we're masters at making sure that all the balls stay in the air and you don't end up with a Friday night, mom, my baseball uniform's dirty and we have a tournament tomorrow moments. Uh, it's parents' worst nightmare, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. So how did how did this all get started? What what led you to, to, to founding Queen of To Do? So I, uh, back in 2010, uh, November of 2010, I had a baby. And then three weeks later, we were transferred from Iowa to Austin with my now ex-husband's job. And uh, I, I couldn't bear the thought of putting him in daycare for 40 hours a week, 40 plus hours a week, and only coming out like three, $400 ahead for the month. Like I can do something from home that brings in that much, like that's nothing. Um, and so in my head, I was just going to start a little errand company that, you know, I would run around town and pick stuff up for people, um, drop off dry cleaning, that kind of thing. And that didn't get traction as quickly as I had hoped, uh, you know, with bringing a baby along and all that. Um, so I'm, I'm a resourceful person. I was like, well, I can do laundry and dishes and errands and like hanging pictures, all of these different things that my clients need, you know, light meal prep. Sure. So I started saying yes to anything that they needed. And uh, it just grew from there. Um, Come 2020, of course, COVID hit and I pivoted to virtual work. My second husband is immune compromised. And so it really, we we went into lockdown very, very early and stayed there for a very long time. Um, So pivoted to the virtual work, started helping people with just, you know, scheduling and trying to keep things afloat and like making arrangements and I mean even just doing a curbside pickup for groceries and getting them dropped off outside their house anything that still was like slightly helpful to them when the world was falling apart um and then about six months in got the opportunity to take on a vacation property for a family that bought a four acre you know beautiful property in Leander Uh, They closed right around Thanksgiving and we're coming in for Christmas. And so I ordered everything to outfit this whole house. Um, You know, my, my entire living room (laughs) was full of Christmas trees and towels and dishes and everything you could imagine. Um, And then by the time COVID was sort of settling down, uh, people had enough of trying to balance everything themselves. Um, I brought on my business partner who has helped us grow uh, to a team of 11 now uh, in the last couple of years. And our revenue has skyrocketed 1100% since 19 or 2019. Uh, I don't count 2020. It was just such a garbage year all the way around. (laughs) Like that is an extraneous data point that we just don't need to acknowledge. (laughs) That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Um, So I'm curious as you look at, I mean, throughout your journey, um, I always like to ask like the question of like, 
what role do you play in the business? How many different hats do you have to or get to wear in the business today? And I guess, how has that changed uh, from you know the first couple of years of starting this business to yeah. now growing and having a team and having a, a business partner? Like what, how has your role changed and what does that look like today? So I have learned a lot about being a CEO in the last few years. Um, because I, I come from academia, like I have a psychology degree, I was a college instructor in my, my past life in Iowa, I taught psychology and statistics labs, which my seventh grader loves now, he's like, I have math homework, <laughs> like, hey, um, so I mean, I was just this little woman from the Midwest who was helping people with their dishes and their laundry, and uh, my, my dear friend Heather reached out and was like, well, what's holding you back, and I was like, I can't do it all. And her background is uh, retail sales management. Um, and so she really was like instrumental in our first hire and getting our systems in place. She updated our website. So it's really beautiful now. Um, and she really kind of held my hand through learning how to grow a team. And since then, we've really just leaned into how do we get better as a company? How do we really do things that align with where we want to be because we don't want our clients to have balance and our our team to burn out we want our team to also have that same level of support and balance um so that's really been a huge part of our growth and digging into i'm so sorry my dog keeps whining um i can't send him outside because the chickens are out there so like i, I basically <laughs> have a farm here as well so that's another one of my hats um so we we really have learned how to interact with our team. I've gotten really great at hiring folks um, because I've never done an interview before in my life before I started doing this. Um, but finding people who really value their time. Um, and then honestly, I, I've been really uncomfortable with the idea of sales. And over the summer, my business partner was like, but you're the face of the company. And I'm like, Okay. Um, and so I don't so much think like the sales hat is the newest one that I'm wearing. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm finding that I really wear it well, which has been a surprise because sales has never been my strong suit. Like I am an introvert to the core. I don't think of myself as somebody who can sell. Um, and I'm really, I decided I don't care what the outcome is. I want to talk to people. I want to connect with people. I want to learn more about what the modern struggle is for business owners and parents and, you know, very, very highly driven people who want to get to the next level in their careers and are struggling to figure out how to do that with 24 hours a day. Um, mm. So, you know, you hear a lot in business, your first hire should be an assistant. And we're kind of flipping the script on that. You don't have to find the perfect assistant for your work find the perfect assistant for your home. You know, we train our team to do the household management. And so we've got a whole process built out. Like we specifically train people on how to provide highly customized services that really meet our clients' needs. Um, and it, it feels kind of like mind reading, but we really just work with people for so long that we get to know their needs, their preferences. We know what groceries they want in their fridge. We know the family schedule. Um, we know when they've got a meeting that's going to run long and they just can't squeeze one more thing into the day, but the dog's got to go to the vet. You know, we, we keep track of all of that. We pay attention to when the car needs gas. Cause have you ever done that where you're like, Oh, future me will fill the car with gas in the morning, your lights on <laughs> as you pull into the driveway. And then future you is running late because your kids refuse to put their shoes on or, you know, you, you tore your pants on the way out there. I mean, like life happens and it humbles all of us. <laughs> mm. um, so giving people that breathing room um, has really been instrumental in the way that we train our team and the way we approach uh, potential clients. You know, um, we might not be the right fit for everybody and that's okay. But also some people just need to sit down and have a conversation about acknowledging how thin they're stretched and how hard it is right now. And here, yeah, we see that all the time. And it's not just you. It's, it's everybody. Um, you know, everybody's trying to get so much done in their day. And if they get home at night and just want to relax, it comes with a side of guilt because they should be doing the laundry and they should be doing the dishes or 
it's not going to get done. Um, and so we really want to support people in making that conscious decision to offload the home management piece and the laundry and the dish because it doesn't matter who does your laundry and dishes, you know, especially if they know where stuff goes. Why, why should you do that yourself? Um, particularly if you're an entrepreneur who's kind of right on the cusp of like the next big, big leap in your business. Um, by offloading that home piece, you're getting multiple hours back a week that you don't even have to think about it now. It just happens. You leave in the morning and everything is chaos and you come in the afternoon. It's like walking into a magazine. Um, it's, it's incredible. And it does give people back so much mental bandwidth that they can use to pour into their business, into their community and into their family and friends. Um, and that's really where we see our clients make huge strides is when they don't have that same just mental drain of constantly thinking about, oh, I need to schedule this and oh, the dishwasher stopped working and oh, all of these things that just kind of live in the back of your brain and keep you from really reaching your full potential. We want to take those off people's plates and enable them to really fully engage where they are most needed in their zone of genius and with their families. Mm. So I want to, we talked a bit now about, I, I think a little bit on who primarily you serve. And um, I want to, I want to just kind of clarify that even deeper for the audience. So I always like to kind of frame it up this way. Um, if I'm in the audience and I'm watching this later on, how do I know that I'd be a really good fit to, to talk to you and your team, or I might know somebody that I need to refer over to you. So we kind of have two client profiles we work from. Uh, one that was my assumption when I first started, the busy mom who's, you know, carrying a lot of that mental load. The average woman in America spends 20 hours a week on household maintenance tasks, you know, laundry dishes, errands, planning for the kids' doctor's appointments, running kids all over. Um, it doesn't have to be mom. It can be a third party that just comes in and takes care of things. Um, so the busy family is kind of our, our one, they, they tend to use more hours in a week. Um, they tend to have higher needs, you know, even as far as three kid, two parent families, if all three of your kids have an activity, you're still one adult short <laughs> for getting them to and from, <laughs> um, you know, and just keeping track of like, where are the baseball cleats? Where's the glove where, you know, I lost my goggles and like, wait, oh, finding the, the baseball uniform shoved in the bottom of a bag that, you know, oops, we forgot to wash that last week after the tournament. Um, you know, the, helping manage all of those things and let both adults thrive in their, their business and their, their careers, whether they're entrepreneurs or not. Um, and the other is uh, typically single men in their 20s, 30s, 40s who may or may not be married, um, may or may not ever have been married, who know the value of their time and know in order to really thrive in their careers and their relationships, they need to not be doing everything at home. Um, so those are kind of our two client profiles that we work from. We also work with a lot of people who are neurodivergent. So people with ADHD who have children that might be on the autism spectrum, who have, you know, executive functioning struggles. Um, I have ADHD myself, also have depression. And so sometimes just doing the simplest thing takes more mental and energy resources than I have. Um, so having somebody who asks things like, hey, does your kid have any special interests? You know, I saw you have train tracks all over your dining room table. Do you want me to put those away or do you want, is that going to cause a meltdown later tonight? Um, you know, a lot of times folks with ADHD, if things get put in opaque containers, they do not exist. And so acknowledging that and finding organizational systems that might not look Pinterest perfect, but serve the family and serve the individuals well, that's what we're looking for. We're not a cookie cutter company that's out there to treat everybody exactly the same. We see each and every client, each and every family as an individual with unique needs and preferences, and we meet them where they are. So we provide a very high level of service. Um, so we really are looking for people who are very, very busy 
or struggling with those executive processing things and just need a mental break, um, those are the folks we love to help. Um, anybody who's, who's busy and doesn't want to do their dishes, laundry errands, tidying, everybody always jokes about cleaning before the housekeeper cleans. Like that's our role is to make sure <laughs> that like the other people helping support the household can do their jobs at a very high level because things are already to the point that they can come in and do those. Um, you know, even things like yeah, we live in Texas. Um, it was 105 degrees all summer long. We had several clients who had their their air conditioners go out and the air conditioner companies are like, oh, we're booked out until next week. And even then it's a nine to nine window. Are you kidding me? Like nobody could take a full day off of work to just hang out at home. Um, so being able to set up those appointments, we collect information like all of the model and serial numbers for all the major systems in the home for each new client. So that when they call and say, hey, my HVAC just went out, we can call our trusted companies that we've worked with for the last 13 years and say, hey, it's a Bryant system. Here's the model. Here's the serial. This is what's going on. Do you have the parts on hand to fix that today? And we've worked really hard to build those relationships with other companies so they know when they get a call from a queen of to-do employee, they're going to get in there fast. We're going to be on site to answer any questions. We're going to get approval from our clients very quickly. Um, and they know they're going to be able to come in and solve the problem right away, which means they have an additional happy customer who is spreading the word. Um, so we really work hard to build those relationships, both client facing and uh, business partner facing um, so that everybody comes out ahead. So what's been your philosophy to marketing? Uh, how do you get the word out for all of this amazing work that you all do? Uh, it's primarily word of mouth. We do have a lot of fun on our social media. Like we're very professional in home, but we do, you know, we're, we're joyful people. We want to bring more joy into the world, more happiness, more laughs. And so our social media pages are kind of goofy. We're, we're big on memes and like, um, just, you know, everybody's having such a hard time right now with like trying to do all the things all the time. And so if we can make personal assistance accessible through, um, through memes. <laughs> We're all for that. Um, I obviously have a very like laid back CEO vibe. This is kind of my go-to um, attire, for lack of a better word, because I never know when I'm going to jump in and, you know, meet somebody at the grocery store and they're going to see my shirt and be like, all life's hassles handled, which is what it has on the back. Um, and have them go, oh, I would love to not be taking half a day off work to take my dog to the vet and pick up prescriptions. Yes, <laughs> you should do less of that. We also are really involved in community organizations like NABO, the National Association of Women Business Owners. Here locally in Austin, the Fiesta Group has been wonderful for us. Fiesta sounds for, or stands for Founders, Investors, Entrepreneurs, Startups, Techs, tech and Austin newcomers. So it's been a wonderful place for us um, just to meet other people and hear about what interesting things people are doing in the startup and tech community here. Um, it's such a vibrant group of folks down here um, that we, we love attending those events. We do um, partnerships with different nonprofits around town. Um, try, you know, there's one called Heartening. Amazing work. They will pick up donations in bulk and then sort and redistribute them to other nonprofits in the area that need those specific items. So it simplifies our life. We're not sorting donations and trying to drop them off in three or four different places. Things get where they're most needed and our clients are getting a steal because they will pick up for free <laughs> in the major Austin area. So partnering with people like that, that are having such a huge impact in the community makes everything better. It's a win, win, win for everyone involved. And we, love that kind of marketing where we can say, well, we partner with this amazing organization, um, builds their awareness, connects us with all of their clients and, um, gives our clients a one-stop shop for getting their stuff out of their house when they're decluttering and moving on with things. So. That's amazing. Um, so you, you, you mentioned this, you know, learning curve when it came to kind of becoming the CEO that you are today and learning to build the business. Uh, I'm curious if, and, and there may be many, but is there one or two, uh, no, let's call it memorable roadblocks or hurdles or, or 
challenges that you had to overcome in kind of this business journey um, that's allowed you to become the individual, the business leader that you are today? Um, honestly, one of the biggest things was I had to learn the hard way. So I was raised by a single mom, very independent. You know, it's better if I just do it myself. And it, it took a mildly devastating uh, life event for that to finally end. And for me to go, oh, help is amazing. Even though I'd been preaching it to clients for years, um, it literally took my husband being hospitalized for a month for a stem cell transplant and me literally not being able to do it all. Um, and giving up that control of my way is the right way. Um, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it all. He was down in South Austin in the hospital. We had two young children. Um, our, our younger at that point was, oh gosh, uh, 13 months old when he was in the hospital. And so he was not working. Obviously we had two kids. I was working full-time still just to try to financially support the family and it was really important to me that I be there for him. Um, he, he was having a really hard time. This was his second round with cancer. Um, and what they don't tell you before you go into it for a stem cell transplant is they are literally going to give you a fatal dose of chemo and then hopefully bring you back. And so when that's your reality, the laundry and the dishes seem really unimportant all of a sudden. And it does not matter how they are done or if they're in the right place. If people want to give of their time and their energy to drop off meals and run laundry through, yes, please help me. Um, and so it, it really was like being hit by a truck of, no, you're not going to do everything yourself anymore. Surprise. Um, and it, it occurred to me that by being so fiercely independent, I was depriving my friends and my loved ones of loving me in a way that they wanted to um, through supporting us. It, I was denying them the feeling that I get every time I help a client through a crisis or just through <laughs> laundry and dishes. I wasn't allowing people to love me in that way. And so by this very <laughs> abrupt traumatic experience of not being able to literally like I would come home crash for the night and then get up the next morning, drop my kids off at school and daycare and go to work, go to the hospital and then come back, get the kids in bed. And that was just like the endless cycle. My children would not have eaten had it not been for our community because I couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it all. And, um, that really has informed, me and my experience as a CEO is I don't want my team to get to the point that they have to get hit by a truck to, to accept help and have that kind of support in their own lives. So even though we are only two years into having employees and still striving to get our business to a point that we are profitable enough to provide a full benefits package, we'll do things like, it's really crappy that you had your daughter break an ankle today. Can we send you dinner? Can I send someone to help you catch up on laundry? And so we will, we will we'll subsidize our own team to go and help other teammates. Um, we encourage our team to take mental health breaks and say, you know what? I just need a little breathing room right now. Um, our team does not ask for time off. We don't own their free time. So if they say, I need a day off, yes, absolutely, take it. And it's my job as a CEO and a leader to figure out how to meet the client needs if we've got a team member that needs to be out for a bit. Um, everyone deserves to have that kind of support and balance and that includes our employees. Mm -hmm. So that's very much something that we have leaned into, especially the last couple of years is we want our team to be at their kids' school plays on a Tuesday afternoon for some reason, <laughs> you know, like why is this the time? But also, that's the time. Go do that. Be involved with your kid's school. Host the PTA bake sale and take a day off of work to make that, that happen. Um, we want to help empower our team and our community to build those relationships. Everybody rises when everybody's not pushed to their absolute breaking point. 
And so we're not engaging in that hustle culture with our team. Um, you know, we, it, it's not always the easiest way because it's definitely not the most profitable way. Um, business books are not written for people who are like, but we love our team and only want them working a little bit. Um, you know, like it's, it's, we're kind of building the plane as we fly it and we're here for that. It's a wild ride, but we love it. Hmm. So tell me more about the next three to five years. Where, where do you see the, oh, the vision gosh. of the business continuing to grow? How do you see your role changing over the next handful of years? But what, give us some of the vision. Where are you headed? We want to be nationwide in the next five years. We want to be a, a, a name that everybody knows where they're like, oh, you've got to hear about this amazing business that has changed my life. We want to be that company. Um, and we want to do it in a way that aligns with our values of not burning people out, of making sure our team and our clients have the support they need and are empowered to say, hey, here's my boundary and hold it. Um, that's all really important to us. And so I'm not sure what the path looks like, but nationwide in five years is the goal. Um, so whether that's setting up different regions and opening branches and being headquartered here in Austin, or whether that's franchising, I'm not sure what the path is, but we know mm -hmm. what the, what the goal is and we'll work our way back from there. We did just launch in San Antonio, which is really exciting. We've been there about two weeks now. So um, if you know people in San Antonio, please send them my way. Um, Houston and Dallas are next. All of those are pretty easy. We can um, bring people here into Austin for training. We can, you know, send people there to support growth as needed. Um, we've got a couple wonderful team members that are willing to travel for us right now. So they're happy to go visit friends, family in Houston, Dallas, and um, help the company expand in those areas. So, um, yeah, we're, we have big goals. We've, we've had big goals. Um, next year we want to hit the million dollar mark. That's our, our next big financial goal for the company. Um, but really most important is continuing to grow and scale in a way that aligns with our values of supporting people in a sustainable way, um, and not just burning out our, our team. Phenomenal. I love the goals. I love the ambition and the clarity that you have on, on where things are headed. Um, I want to be respectful of time, so I've got a couple rapid fire questions. I'd love to kind of Absolutely. you know sh shift into here as we as we begin to wrap up. Uh, four of them in total. First one: When you look at your journey so far, um, what would you say for you has been your key to success? Oh, <laughs> refusing to give up, um, even in the face of adversity. Like there are so many times it would have been so much easier to just get a job. Um, I. I don't want to, I'm so proud of what I've built. And so, um, just continuing to be persistent and find areas where I can pivot. How can I expand these services, you know, and just going out and finding new clients, whether that's networking, whether it's looking for ads for personal assistant work online, whether it's looking for, you know, I need help hosting a Christmas dinner, you know, we do a lot of holiday decor. So putting out ads in September, October, which feels ridiculous, but people need help with that. You know, um, we've got folks that are older that literally they just, they want somebody to help them put up their Christmas tree happily. That's my favorite. Like, it's like being Santa for adults. It's amazing. <laughs> I love that. Um, how about advice? Uh, what piece of advice would you give to other business owners and entrepreneurs out there? Uh, dream bigger than you think you can achieve. <laughs> um, I, I honestly never fathomed that we would have grown to this extent. Um, and I couldn't have been it with, done it without my business partner. Um, Heather's been incredible. Uh, outsource the stuff that you're not good at, that you don't enjoy, that you don't love doing, that you're like, oh, it's time to do that again. Outsource it. Find a way. Take an extra client and get that shit off your plate. Hmm. Book recommendations. Either one book that you're currently reading or Ooh. have read most recently. It does not have to be business related, but a recommendation that you would give to the audience. 
I'm a, I'm an audiobook while I'm working person because like folding nine loads of laundry, you have a lot of downtime where it's either thinking or listening to something. So I just finished listening to uh, 10X is easier than 2X. Hmm. And I can attest to, yes, when you're not focused on like just doubling things, when you're like, okay, how can we really make this explode? Um, 10X happens really fast. Who knew? <laughs> it's a good recommendation. I know, um, right? Final final rapid fire question and then we'll we'll start to uh we'll end on the the last question i'd love to to wrap okay. up on but before we do this is kind of a just a fun question you had to choose just one area in your business and you only get to choose one one area in your business you could take a little bit of magic dust and sprinkle it all over that one that one spot in the business and it would be 10 times better when you wake up tomorrow where would you choose to put that magic dust the lead generation I'm amazing at closing leads. Um, but we, at this point, they just kind of come in as they come in and then it's my job to close them. Uh, if we had 10 times the amount and I maintained my current close rate, like we, it would be bananas. <laughs> That's a good spot to put it. I like that. Um, right. So for those that are interested, they're watching this uh, later on that want to learn more about uh, what y'all do, that want to connect with you, that just want to kind of follow along, where can we advise them to go for more information? Okay, so we are at Clean Up To Do on all the socials, um, TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. Uh, you can find us at Queen Of To Do and also queenoftodo.com. Perfect. I will be sure to put both of those into the video description below. Um, Kate, I think you're on LinkedIn as well. So I may throw that in I there. Am. So if they want to send you a DM, you know, just to say, Hey, saw you on the business spotlight, Thanks, always encourage additional connections, things like that, especially being here local to the, the central Texas market. Um, so for those watching, it'll all be in the video des description below. Make sure you take a moment, go click it, go follow, go check everything out um, and make sure that uh, you get that piece done. Um, Kate, as we finish up, I gotta ask, what is the most inspiring thing to you today? Oh, um, oh gosh. Oh, we just, we were just at the, um, the NABO Women's Business Conference. The annual conference was held here in Austin this week. And I, we posed the question, um, if you weren't doing that 20 hours of, that the average woman spends on household stuff, what would you do? And the responses that we got were incredibly inspiring. There are so many women business owners out there who are giving their all to their, their families and their, their companies. And, um, I, and it was really inspiring to see what would people, what people would do to give back to themselves. And honestly, a lot of it is really simple stuff. And that's, but that inspires me to continue to grow the company so that they can continue mm. to do what they're doing, but also care for themselves. Um, so seeing all of those responses and also all the amazing things that they're doing in their own work and their own business and what happens when we all come together in that setting is just incredible and so inspiring. I love that. Kate, thank you so much for taking the time. This has been a genuine pleasure to hear all the amazing passion that you have for your business and the the growth that you've seen over the number of years um, and sharing just kind of the wisdom that you've gained along the way. So thank you so much for, for sharing and being here with us today. So much. I really appreciate having the opportunity.